trumpet, and then the angels gather together the elect. So what's going to take place here? What is this great sound of a trumpet? We find another verse of scripture here that talks about the trumpet and the gathering of the elect of God. It's found in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17. Notice these words of scripture. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, or the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So here we find Jesus Christ, once again, the Lord himself is going to come back to this earth with a shout. There's this sound, isn't there? With the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. And when this takes place, the Bible says, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You see, friends, many of God's people today, they are dead. They're in the grave. They're waiting for Christ to come back to take them to be with him. It goes on now and says in verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is the beautiful picture of the second coming of Christ, coming to set up his kingdom, coming to gather his elect, his people from the four corners of the earth. Many of those people have died, and when that trumpet goes forward, friends, it calls the sleeping saints back to life, back to eternal life. The dead in Christ shall rise first, the Bible says. Here the Bible is telling us that when Jesus comes back to this earth, when he comes back to this earth, the dead in Christ are going to be raised out of their graves and those who are alive will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Now the topic tonight is called the rapture and the second coming. Now this is where we find the rapture taking place. You see, the word rapture just means to be caught up with power. When Jesus comes, the Bible tells us there very, very clearly that the saints, the people of God, are caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall they ever be with the Lord. Now, this is one way you and I can tell who the false Christ and who the true Christ is. When Jesus comes, does he come down to meet us, or do we rise up to meet him? The Bible is very clear that when Jesus comes, we are caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Jesus is not coming onto this earth, friends. We are caught up to meet him in the air. If someone comes to you and says, hey, listen, I'm Jesus and he's on the earth, you know, friends, that that is not Jesus Christ. We will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. This is the rapture. We're raptured up, as it were, to meet the Lord in the air the air, at the second coming of Christ. Friends, can you imagine that day? When the dead that are in the graves hear that trumpet, hear that call, hear that voice, and the graves open, and those who have been faithfully serving God, waiting for his second coming, are raised out of those graves and caught up to meet Christ in the air. What a joyous day that will be. You know, the, the saddest thing that takes place in everybody's life on this earth is this death. Every one of us, whether it be ourselves, our family, father, mother, our children, our brothers or sisters, we all face death somewhere. But the Christian faith, my friends, gives us hope. It gives us a purpose to live because we know that if we die, we shall live again. Jesus in John 11 verse 25 said these famous words. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Friends, there are thousands across this earth right now tonight weeping and wailing because they've lost someone that they love that's been snatched away by the grave. But the Christian faith gives us hope that in Jesus Christ, though we are dead, yet shall we live. When? When Christ comes on the resurrection morning, when the dead in Christ are raised out of their graves, when we're caught up, when we're raptured up to meet the Lord in the air and we shall ever be with the Lord. Friends, being a Christian gives us a hope and a purpose for living. It gives us a hope and a purpose when death comes to a loved one. That we can have the confidence that one day we shall see that loved one live again. Whether we live or die, friends, we have no need to fear death. If we are a Christian, if we've committed our life to Jesus Christ, we will be raised on that resurrection morning. So, so far we've learned some interesting points here. The first point, it's a literal event. It's going to be point two, a visible event. Point three, it's a glorious event. Point four, it's going to be an 
audible event, but we also find it will be a climatic event. What's going to take place to the earth when Jesus comes? Notice what takes place here. Notice these verses. These verses are in context of the second coming of Christ. Revelation 16, verse 18. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. Verse 20 and 21, it goes on. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. Here we find when Jesus comes, there'll be the great earthquake. Like There's never been an earthquake like this before. This is off the, off the Richter scale, friends. It's so big that mountains begin to sink. Islands disappear. We're told there'll be a great hail. Every hail being the size or the weight of a talent. That means that those hails, the hail will be the size of around about footballs or soccer balls. They're going to come across this earth. This earth and the cities thereof will be broken and destroyed by the glory and the power and the majesty of the second coming of Christ. Notice Jeremiah 4, verse 26, what it has to say. Jeremiah said, Behold, I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. When Jesus Christ comes back to this earth, friends, he's coming back to take his people to be with him. But he's also going to come back as an avenger to those who have rejected him and smited his people. We find that there are two classes. When Jesus Christ comes back to this earth, there will be but two classes, lost and saved. It's as simple as that. And we have the opportunity today to be part of those who will be saved. And notice what the saved will be saying when Jesus comes back. The Bible gives us the information of what they will say, I believe. In Isaiah 25, verse 9, when Jesus Christ comes back and every eye shall see him and the righteous look up, Isaiah 25 verse 9 says, And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him, and we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Friends, don't you want to be there on that great day when Jesus comes to look up and say, Lo, this is our God. We've waited for him, and he will save us. Is it your desire, friend, to be amongst those who are preparing to be ready when Jesus Christ comes back to this earth. Friends, Jesus Christ is coming back to this earth. We've seen the signs of the times fulfilling around us. Christ will come back. No day no, no, or hour. No one knows the day or the hour. But we do know he's coming back. And the signs are fulfilling around us. And friends, it won't be a secret event. You won't miss this event. Let's just recap the points that we've learned so far in our lecture. Events at Christ's coming. First of all, it will be a literal event. Secondly, every eye will see Jesus. Third, all the angels will be with him. Fourth, there will be the sound of a trumpet. Fifth, the righteous dead will be raised to life. Sixth, the saved are caught up to meet Christ in the air. Seven, the wicked are destroyed. Eight, the earth's surface is destroyed. And nine, the saved praise God for their salvation. This is what we've learned so far. When Christ returns, friends, he's not coming back secretly, as some would say. There are some in the Christian world today that believe when Christ comes back, he's not going to come back visibly, as we've just found the Bible telling us. He's going to come back secretly. In fact, there's some churches that are teaching right now that Jesus Christ has already come back. Notice what Matthew 24, verse 24 and 26 tells us. This is talking about the false Christ sign. Notice these words again. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now, we looked at this part of the verse at the beginning of our lecture. These false Christs are going to come and deceive the elect people of God. But notice what they say. Behold, I have told you before, this is Jesus speaking, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. 
Jesus himself said, If people...